Hello and welcome to part three um, of the uh, 3D buildings that I'm decorating. Now, obviously in the first one I started on the inside. Um, and then in the last episode I went to the outside. Well, this week we're going back inside. And what I'm going to be looking at this time is... Uh, some little bits of decoration for inside the house um, some of these I've got some 3d printed bits of furniture um, that I've had for quite a while actually because I normally make my own with scraps but I'm wanting to use these up so you know I'm going to be painting some of these up I've given them a quick I've built them up and given them a quick spray of the uh, primer and I'm not I'm not going to overdo it. I might not use them all but I've just got them all ready anyway and then the other thing that I've done is I've printed off some small pictures and things to put on the wall um, what I've done is I've just picked lightly photo uh, pictures that you'd see for that period but I've also just for my just for myself really popped in a few old photos from the family um that I thought I could you know get away with and just to personalize it um but what I'm going to do to make them look a little bit better I mean normally I would have printed these onto a, a gloss paper but I looked and I was out of gloss paper so I'm just going to make do but what I do to make them stand out from the wall a little bit is I'm just going to cut a slither of balsa wood to the size of each one and stick them on. So that's what I'm going to be doing first. Obviously the major part of the job is going to be, you know, weathering the buildings a bit more, putting, you know, stains on the walls and rust on the drain pipes, things like that. All the little bits that just give it that extra feel. And... Um, then obviously where appropriate on some of the buildings there'll be rubble and bricks and stuff like that to add. So anyway I'm going to do this little bit of tinkering first. <laughs> so I'll get these done and uh, when they're all painted up and everything and the pictures are ready to be put in I'll bring you back. So I've mounted these on the little bits of uh, balsa wood and what I've d discovered is when I was touching up the edges um, I caught the others, uh, the picture with a wash, and they look a lot better. And uh, then I started painting up all my little furniture bits. As I said, I probably were not going to use them all, um, but I thought I might as well paint everything now, and then I can pick and choose, you know, whatever I want to use for these buildings. I mean, I should focus more on the bombed out buildings. Because that's where you get the benefit from having bits like this. So now that these are all uh, painted up. Um, and I've given them a bit of a wash as well. Um, they, they're just about dry. Some of them are a little bit tacky to the touch. But not, not many. Most of them are dry. Um, I'm going to start placing these first. Before I start any more of the weathering process. Um... So basically this, I'm not saying I'm necessarily going to use them all. It's going to be a, a trial and error thing really. You've got to put in what you think looks right. Um, let's have a look. I'll start with the ground floor. Now on this one, I'm going to try and leave... Uh, a lot of space available if I can you know for the troops when I'm using it so I think what I'm gonna do is on this one I'm gonna put a picture on on the wall first of all for the pictures I'll probably just use this uh, wood glue to stab a little bit on the back and stick it on but obviously for some of the uh, 3d printed items I'm gonna stick them down with super glue right. uh, 
think we'll start with this one. Let's see if I can close you in a bit on this as well. So I've just pasted the back of it. And then, you know, keep in mind the height of your soldiers. Let's hold that on for a second. Uh, you see. And it's got, you know, with having it mounted on that bit of uh, balsa wood, it does give it that 3D look now. It doesn't look like something stuck on the wall. Like I say, I'm not, I'm not going to go mad with these. Uh, I'm going to be fairly sparing. Um, I'll leave that one for now. I'm not saying that I've finished with it completely. Let's have a look. I'm going to start with this one by putting one of the items in now. So I'm going to have the, th the uh, little single bed in here. But I want to try and keep the windows as clear as possible. You know, because that's obviously where you're going to want to position your, your troops uh, for firing out the windows and things. With a bit of a spray just to... So, uh, look. so I'm trying not to obscure the windows and the edges so I've kept it a bit out, out of the way and now I'm going to put a picture on um, on that wall because that's where you're going to see it so we want it you know where it can give the look from the battlefield of a real home Like I say, I don't want to overwhelm these because they are play pieces, so, you know, I don't want to put too much in them so as I can't use them properly. I'm going to put this chest of drawers on this one. I think I'm probably going to be using most of my um, uh, 3D printed items on these bombed out houses because, you know, that's where they can be seen to the best effect and uh, give the look that I'm after. picture on that wall as well
Right. What I'm going to do now is, you know, because you don't want to sit and watch me look uh, pasting all of these in place. What I'll do is I'll place the ones that I want to and then I'll bring you back and just give you a quick overview of where I've put them and why. Right, I think I've put uh, quite a few of these little pieces in now. Uh, as you can see, I've got quite a lot left over. Um, it might well be that I don't use them because I don't tend to bother with furniture inside closed buildings because there's not a lot of point. You really want them uh, to suggest a living house once the house has been blown open. So I may well keep most of them for another project. But I'll just show you the bits that I've put in so far on these two bomb blasted buildings. Obviously with that one, because it's fairly enclosed, I've just gone with a painting on the wall. And then on the second one, I, I put the bed in. I've now put a chair next to that and a picture above it, next to the bed, as well as the picture on the wall. So that's the second floor of that one. It's such a small attic space. I'm probably going to leave that in case I want to put snipers up there. Um, so that one will stay as it is. Right, this one I've gone a little bit more to town on. First of all, I've got the painting, dining table and the chair. But then I've got a damaged sink and toilet. Um, so what I've done is I've mocked up a bit of an internal room here for a bathroom. Not that that was the in thing in the 40s. You know, most toilets were outside, but hey, I just wanted to use it. So I've just mocked the walls up and the door with balsa wood. And then put the sink in the... You, you can barely see the toilet. It's down there in that gap. Obviously, I'm going to put more rubble around that so it won't look as stark as that. But that's probably the most dressing up I've done on, on it so far. This one, just the painting on the wall. And I've put a chest of drawers just here. You know, just to give it a bit more look. that one is that one isn't it right and the second floor of the one with the bathroom I've just put a wide open wardrobe and again a picture on the wall and a chair by the side of it nothing too much because you want as much room as possible to play with uh, but just enough to, su you know, to suggest that it was a living house. I don't know why Warlord included a massive teddy bear in there, 3D bits for bomb, <laughs> bomb blast, but I thought I'm going to use it. So what I've done is I've created a bit of an attic space here. So I've got like a, a picture propped up there that's waiting for a frame. The damaged teddy bear, a broken table. Another broken table that some soldiers put there as a bit of, you know, protection. And what I might do is I might paint a couple of packing crates up here to give it that more authentic attic look. You know, where someone stored a load of rubbish up there. And uh, that's it really. I think, as I say, with the enclosed buildings, it's not really worth me using some of these pieces on that. So I think I'll save them for future projects. But what I am doing now, um, before I start moving on to some of the bomb damage, is I broke up what was left of uh, the balsa wood. I'll show you a few of them. I just 
broke them up into random bits and I'm painting them with a wooden colour now and I'm going to use these as debris to put in with any you know bits bricks and rubble that I put on the buildings so I'm just quickly giving them a a dab of this old wood colour and uh, when I move on to the rubbling stage I might be able to position a few of these or bits of these right so I'll get that done and then I'm going to tidy up a little bit and uh, I can move on to the next stage right so the next thing I'm going to do to these bombed out buildings again I won't be doing it um, to the complete buildings is adding some broken glass now people that have been watching me for a while will probably remember me doing this but uh, basically all it is uh, you know like the little uh, packets that the soldiers, individual soldiers come in sometimes? Little Perspex box. What I did is I just cut up a few bits of it and then put it in my little coffee grinder and uh, ground it up into little shards of glass. And what I'm going to do is next to the window areas I'm just going to paste a little bit of PVA, you know, a very thin layer of PVA, and just sprinkle one or two bits of that near the window area. So, just got me glue. I mean, this, uh, it'll dry clear if it shows at all anyway. So, near this window, I'm going to assume it's blasted out, so I'm going to paint it with the PVA. Bit over here as well for this one. And then a little bit over here for the other one, the other window. And then it's just like sprinkling, you know, your uh, scatter. Grab a small amount of it. You don't want to overdo it because obviously some of it's going to have moved over time. And... But it just gives that extra edge to the windows makes them look a bit more realistic I'll bring it in closer for you to see in a minute because I know this is quite difficult really but See if I can get it close enough for you to see some of this. Put a light on it. Can you see that? Yeah, I think it's just starting to show. Let's show you the other side. I'll just put another couple of specks down there, but not much more. That's enough. It just adds to everything, you know, because obviously we've got a bit of debris and that to put in here as well. Right, I've just been adding a few little tiny bits of detail, um, but I wanted to get these down um, before I get to the rubble stage. Um, they're only small bits, but basically... 
I put a suggestion of a few skirting boards onto the edge of that plastic. I'll do something very similar with bricks in some places. I don't want too many because they are going to be fairly fragile. Um, but just enough to suggest something. And then the other thing is I've put the odd. Can you see that in the drawer there? There's a tiny green bottle. Um, and I've put a few of those in different places around the building. There's one there and one these wood. And then I've put those uh, balsa wood spare bits. I've broke into little strips to make them look like, you know, floorboards or joists that have fell down. Again, mainly on the broken buildings for things like this. So... I've not added anything like that on the inside of the uh, complete buildings. And then as I said with this one, I've put the packing crates in there now. I've pushed them to the front to make them look like, you know, the soldiers have pushed them there for a bit of cover to the to this way, this direction. And a few boards that have stretched across there. And then the odd bottle. You see the brown bottles and the green one. So it's just basically to give it a bit more of a lived in feel. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start turning towards uh, the weathering and rust and stuff like that. That I want to suggest on some of the buildings. Um, so this is going to be the longest part of the process. So for now, what I'm going to be doing is just adding some of these Humbrol weather powders. Um, if I tip a little bit out, and then I'll show it you. That's a bit of the uh, dark brown. And then I've got a black here that, well, it calls it smoke. Which is pretty good for any, you know, suggestion of a fire that's gone out. Charred wood, that kind of thing. I've also got some white. That works well with the brown, you know, for, for brick dust. It also works well for different grades of the smoke. And then although I'm going to be using some uh, dry rust from Army Painter, I've also got a Humbrol rust powder, which I'm also going to use in a few places, and it will give it a bit more of a crust to it. But if I... Uh, I'll just add a little bit of uh, obvious stuff. And just show you what it what it looks like. So I've taken these floors off. So like on this on this brown one. You see that? It's quite subtle. I don't need to do too much of this because I've got that clay one to try out as well. And uh, what I'll do is once I've got that how I want it, I'll use some of the decal fix that they do to go over it. Because otherwise this is going to be rubbing off on your fingers every time you use it to the point where most of it's gone. If it was just for a display piece, then you wouldn't really need to bother with that. You know, it'll work as it is. It ain't going to come off just like that, but it will uh, rub off in your hands when you're using them in play. And if I show you a little bit of the black as well. See that on the it gives a nice suggestion 
that a fire has gone off near that wall or like a shell damage or so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around the buildings uh, add a few different effects like that and uh, then I'll bring you back and show you a few of them before we move on to the next ones just wanted to show you a little bit of this um, under these windows I always like to have like a bit of a I don't know smoke uh, mark stain coming down from the window but obviously when I'm putting this on I'm putting it on now with that fix as well because obviously I need this to be permanent otherwise I'd have just used the powder if it was a you know a diorama or something but that's too heavy so then what I do is just rub over it and take off any excess I think you see it's not quite so powerful then and I've also got the other option of adding a bit of the powder into that and giving that a wipe over And that'll give it that smoke look look but what I'm gonna do for this because I wanted that dark and I just wanted to show it you is I'm gonna just mess that up again now but that's the good thing about these uh, powders and things you can you can experiment with it and if you're not happy with something just take it off that's one of the benefits of having given this uh, this layer of varnish before I put it on because I can take this off and put it how I want it again. You see? Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to darken up a bit under the windows again how I originally wanted it now that I've shown you that and uh, sometimes if there's a fire it's going to go up through the window so you're going to have it above the window so if I uh, let's put a little bit on this one have it fanning out where it's licked up around it you see right I'll carry on doing this and then I'll bring you back and give you another look at it before we move on to another thing right so along with the uh, weathering I need to do some painting here so what I'm doing now is I'm picking out some of the uh, rust spots you know on the metal uh, drain pipes and guttering and uh, just basically focusing on the jointed areas where you know it may rust and uh, now I'm adding that final touch on the roof of uh, you've got to have a bit of bird poop haven't you to make <laughs> to make things look realistic and uh, while I'm doing that I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit of brick dust here and there on some PVA just to get started nothing too much because I will come back to it so I've added a lot of the smaller weathering details right down to bird muck <laughs> you gotta have a bit of bird muck to make it real <laughs> um, I've also done some of the rusting up some of the washes on the windows and some of the uh, just gone over the blinds again and uh, now I'm going to try this uh, weathering wash grime by Flory. I've never used it before, so this is going to be a bit of a learning process. So I've just got to be a bit uh, careful that I don't overdo it. But it does say it can wash off, so that's... 
something and that will add to the effects of it as well apparently. I'm just going to splash some on really at the minute and, and then I'm going to rub it around with a bit of cloth. pretty good actually and I'm far from convinced that I'm doing it right at first anyway because I think one of the other things that you can do is let it dry on there and then run water streaks through it so that's something else I'm going to practice with I think I'm also going to try a dry brush on this Looking pretty good actually. I think I could do it with a, a small delicate brush as well and have a few runs coming down. Maybe have it under the windows as well. You know, I think this is this. I'll definitely be giving this another go. I've never used this before, but uh, it's like you know, I'm experimenting at the minute, but I'm sure, I, you know, over time, like you do, you know, through trial and error, you find things that work, but some better than others, don't you? And I think this has got a lot of potential.
right, well, let me have a play with this and uh, I'll bring you back and I'll show you some of the effects that I've uh, managed to get from it. Like I say, I'm going to experiment with a small brush and uh, get some water streaks and things like that on it as well. Right, I'll bring you back in a bit. Right, so I'm experimenting now with the thin brush and putting these little streaks on is just, it's really working well. Um, I know I've said it before, but I've never used this uh, flory stuff before. Now, whether it's because it's uh, clay based, but it seems to work really well. Um, I'm using it on a variety of surfaces, you know, like the the steps and the red bricks and uh, render. And, you know, it's giving different effects, you know, each time I use it. Right, now that I've done all the painting effects, it's just really the final touches on these two bomb damaged buildings. Um, because obviously I don't really need much in the way, well, don't need any rubble that I can see on the uh, complete buildings. Um, I mean, you could put a bit of debris on the roof that's blown from another building, but I don't really see the need. So it's just this one. So what I'm doing is I'm just pouring a, a mixture of some uh, fine rubble um, some of it's uh, got like brick dust in it we've already put a bit of brick dust down already but this one's got some uh, blacks and whites in it so it gives it a bit of contrast More of the brick dust as well. I didn't want to overdo the brick dust because obviously it's essentially I've I've painted it as if it's a stone house, but having seen some of the pictures, repairs were done with bricks, so there's going to be bricks present. It's not solid so there you can see it put, put the light on it a bit I'm not going to overdo it because I want plenty of room for the soldiers to stand around and you can see the loose bricks that I put on it just to give it a bit more effect of it falling down and I've dropped a few in there as well look next floor I'm just putting these on with a bit of PVA just a small amount I've not put a massive amount in there um, but what I will do um, you know as I call it finished I will give it a quick spray again of, of some uh, watered down glue not a lot just a bit because we're not I've not really put a thick layer on there so there's no need to go mad but it'll just help to seal it in and then of course I will give it a final varnish as well Just put a bit up on this uh,
it looks quite effective on the the edges look takes away you know the molded plastic look a bit more you can just finally see it right I'll just do the rest of these and then I'll bring you back and we'll see where we are right so that's basically the finishing touches to them all now um, it's like anything you can keep on going sometimes you can go too far um, so I'm gonna leave these here um, it's better to leave you know as you develop things if you think of a new idea rather than overkilling it on one building I'll leave it and use it on the next as an idea um, but I think I've done enough to these. I'm happy with how they look now. So I'm going to call them finished. So what I'll do now is I'll just take you a few uh, close-up shots as we talk out through the end of the video. And I can tell you a little bit about them. And uh, then we can wind this one up. And that'll be the end of the third part. Right, back in a second. Right, so I thought I'd set these up now with a bit of scenery to give you, you know, a bit of an idea of what they're going to look like in game. And uh, I must say, I've you know particularly pleased uh, with the new wash that I've been using, and uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with them as a group of models. It's like any time you can, you, there's always something else you could have done, but by and large, I'm really happy with these. One thing I have learned uh, going along with these um, from previous buildings that I've done is to be a little bit more thoughtful as to the space I give for, you know, playing the game. Um, so I didn't really want to overdo the rubble or anything like that in these ones. You know, I wanted to focus on keeping the windows clear and the doors clear and have plenty of room to you know place the figures during during battles and then the other beauty of it is you know uh, with the exception of this dutch build um the majority of them are going to go into normandy battles and working on them all at once if nothing else it's allowed me to kind of focus on tying them all together you know making sure that they're going to sit well in a game anyway um you know, if, if you've got any questions you want to ask, you know, please feel free to drop them below or any suggestions or, or techniques that, you know, you've used that have worked. You know, we might as well share ideas and pull it between us. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the series. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you have, uh, by all means, share it with your friends. That That's great. And, um, you know, if, if you haven't already, um, if you'd like to subscribe and, you know, give me a thumbs up. All of it just adds really to, you know, gives me a bit of encouragement to carry on with the, the videoing and everything. And, uh, and it's nice to have you join me, in, you know, in going along with it. So anyway, that's enough rambling for now. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you again next week. Bye.